Hi, this is Meghnath. In this module, we will see a code example for class and object. And I will explain in detail about what is a class and what is an object and how memory is allocated. All those details I'll be explaining in this module. So this is very important for you to understand object-oriented concepts. So please review this. Let's get started. I just opened Eclipse IDE. Now we'll create a new project, file, new, Java project. And you can create any project of your choice. I'm creating here project 1002 and you can create anything of your choice. Click on next. And I don't want to create module info, uncheck this option, click on finish. Now I just created a project, project 1002 and SRC, I'll add a package. Right click on this new package and I'll add here my package. Now normally what you used to do is to add a class here. So new class and I'll write here my class. And this time I'm selecting static void main method. Let me click OK, check the checkbox, click finish. Now I just created a default class you can see here. So this is a class that I've created. I'll just make the brackets more aligned. And I don't need this right side one, let me collapse it. And now what we'll do is, I'll just write here package my package and public class my class and now I just remove the brackets yeah spaces yeah now it looks better now a package as we already know is group of classes now we already have one class and you can see here the file name if you see the file name is my class dot java and the public class that should be there should be my class only so if I change it let's take let's take I'm changing it to my um, a DB class. Now this will give an error. So the file name should be same as your class name that is public. Now I definitely have to keep this class name as my class itself. And now in this package I'll add one more class. So let's take I'm adding here class employee and I'll be writing here public. Don't worry about public for now. I'll explain later public int id and public string name. Now these are the variables as we discussed in the previous class. Encapsulation or a class is group of variables and methods. Now these are the variables. Now what I'll do here, I'll be writing public void. Void means the method will not return anything. So that's void. Public void read data. And I need to, using this function, I need to read id and name from the user. So how do I read it? So I'll be writing here, um, I need to create a scanner object, right? So let's create scanner. Scanner, obj is equal to new scanner. And I'll write here system.in. So I created an object there. And obviously it'll give an error. So why I'm creating outside the method is so that I can, I have to select carefully here, java.util, click on this. Now I need to use this in multiple methods. So I've declared it as outside the class. Now, if I have declared it here itself, then I can only access in this method, okay? So now what I can do here, SYS for control space, enter ID. Now, how do we read it? I read it like this. ID is equal to obj dot next int. Now, SYS for, I can write here, enter name. And how do I read it here? Name is equal to obj dot next. Okay, because it's a string, I'm just giving next. So now I'm reading this ID and um, I'm reading it and storing it in this ID and I'm reading it and storing it in this name. So how this works, I'm going to explain you uh, in this module. Let's see this. Now public void print data. Now I'll write here SYS for ID is equal to plus ID and SYS for name is equal to I'll be writing here plus name. Okay, done. So this class is having employee class and having these two variables ID and name and it is having a method which reads the ID from the user and it'll store. Now, how can it, whenever you have a class, it doesn't occupy anything in the memory. It's just a design. Now, if you want to create or if you want to call these methods and store in employee details, you need to call create an object. Now, how to do that? Now, here, what I can do is, I can delete this code, comments. I'll write here, employee, 
EMP is equal to new employee. Now when you write like this, you are creating a new employee object. Now it's something like, see this is employee, user defined class. I'm creating an object of it. Now new employee, so when you write like this, when you create like this, the variables in this class ID and name will be initialized to default values. Now see here, what I'll do is, I will write here SYSO, I'll be writing here SYSO EMP.ID and I'll write here SYSO EMP.name. Now I'm not reading any values from the user, I just declared an object and I'm directly trying to print the value of ID and name. So let's run this and see what values this ID and name will be printed. Now let's run this. Now you can see here it's printing 0 and null. So 0 is the default value for ID and null is the default value for name. So let's try to understand this. Let's go to MS Paint and let me explain this very clearly for you. Now we have a class employee and this is a class. Now the class name is employee. Now, now this is having two variables called ID and name. Now when you create an object, when you create an object like employee EMP is equal to new employee, it will create in the memory some space and EMP is the object. EMP.ID will be stored in the memory, somewhere in the memory. EMP.name will be stored somewhere in the memory. And by default, the values will be zero and null. Now, if I want to read and store something into this, now what I'll do, I'll delete this. When you write this line, this object will have two variables, EMP.ID and EMP.name. ID will be zero and name will be null when you write like this new employee. Now, now when you don't write new employee, you simply write EMP. Now you are just creating an object and this is not instance. So object is different from instance. So object will not occupy anything in the memory whereas instance will occupy. So when you write, when you write here, let's take, I'll write EMP dot, EMP dot read data. Now I'm trying to call this. Now see here, I'm getting an error because it is not occupied in the memory yet. You just told like, okay, I will, you just created an object, but this is not there anything. Now, if I try to print this values now, see here, without writing this new employee, I'll try to print the values. SYSO control space emp.id and SYSO control space emp.name. Now, previously when I write e is equal to new employee, I got ID and name as zero and null, but now if I run the code now, only with the object, I'm not instantiating it. Now, if I run the code, I'll get, I, I see some errors. So if I proceed like this, you will see, I'll get an error saying like, error, unresolved error. So variable EMP may not have been initialized. So when you write employ EMP, it is not initialized. It is just an object, it's not initialized. If you want to initialize, if you want to initialize, you have to write new employee. Now the moment you write like new employee, the values will be initialized to default values. That's ID is zero and name is null. Now, if you want to initialize with some other values, now let's let's say this now. If you want to initialize with some other values, you have to call read data. Now what this read data will do, read data will read uh, ID from user and name from uh, user and it'll store it in ID and name, emp.id and name. Now if I write here, now, Sorry. Now, if I write here, SYSO EMP dot EMP dot ID and SYSO EMP dot name. Now see what happens. I'm just writing here. Now see what happens when I run this code. Now let's run this. Now this line would have already initialized to, this line would have already initialized to zero and null, but we are calling read data. Now what happens when you call read data? Now enter ID will be called, I'm entering here five and I'll enter here Meghnat. Now this EMP, this EMP read data will store ID as five and will store name as Meghnat. Now that will be printed here. So now if I enter, you'll see it's printing five and Meghnat. So what do we understand from this? When you create an object, 
and initialize it using new employee. When you create, this is just creating an object. This is initializing an object. And this is also called a default constructor. So we'll talk about constructors in the next module. So what this default constructor will do is it'll initialize the values to zero and null. If it's float, it'll be 0, 0.0. If it's Boolean, it'll be, it'll be false. So similarly, it'll, it'll initialize to default values. Now, this is called object creation and this is called object initialization. And here we are calling read data to read the values and we are printing it EMP ID and name. Okay, so now how do I write this here? So now I can write here EMP dot print data. Now this will print the values. Now let's run this. Click OK. And I'm writing here enter ID as 5, enter name as 4. So I'm just saying, ideally I should have entered name as make another something, I just entered 4. So now read data is reading the values into this object, print data is printing the values into this object. So what we have learned so far is that how do we create an object of a class? Employee EMP. How do we initialize an object? Employee EMP equal to new employee. So what this new employee will do? This will initialize this will initialize the class values to default values. And what do we call this new employee? That's called a default constructor. So a default constructor will initialize the values of the class to default values. And how do we call the methods in the class? Using an object. EMP is equal to read EMP dot read data, EMP dot print data. So, so, so practice this by seeing this video and all you have to know is what is default constructor and how, what values it will be initialized. So if it's integer, it will be zero. If it's float, it's 0, 0.0. If it's Boolean, it's false. If it is string, it's initializing to null. Okay. So I hope you are clear with um, how to create an object and how to initialize using new constructor and, um, how to call methods using object. So in the next module, we'll see further details. Thank you and see you in the next module.